Hello, this is the king of all mediums, and I'd like to welcome you to podcast number 23. Wasn't it a beautiful day today? It's the only day you got. So make the most of it. Uh, so tonight, uh, well, first of all, before I start tonight, uh, usually I have a podcast Saturday night, but uh, I have something to do tomorrow, so I will not do the podcast uh, tomorrow, Podcast 24, instead, will be on um, Sunday night. Also, I have an interesting idea. Since topics wear thin, um, I'd be interested, uh, what do you want to ask the key, uh, frequently f- uh, FAQ to the king of all me- mediums? What, what do you have to ask me, you know, about myself? Uh, do you have any interesting questions? Maybe you'd like to ask me about my work? Uh, what do I do when I'm not the king of all mediums, you know? Uh, what do I like? you like sports? Like, what are your hobbies? What is the king of all mediums hobbies? Uh, do I date? Do I have any girlfriends? Uh, things like that, you know? So if you want to, you could ask me in the comments or you could ask me and I, I will try to answer them honestly. Uh, um, uh, you know, whatever you want to ask. Do I have any mental health problems? <laughs> you know, which I do. <laughs> any kind of mental health problems. So uh, just ask me and I will tell you. Uh, by the way, the shirt, I'm posing my muscles like on them, but I actually have an Italian friend and he likes, you know, the way Italians are. I'm 7% Italian, actually, to my mother's side. Uh, uh, she, she's Jewish, but I'm Jewish, my mother's Jewish too, and, but uh, I guess in the Mediterranean, you know, all these shenanigans went on, <laughs> they were kicked out of Spain in 1492, and they had to go east, so they eventually settled, I guess, in modern-day Macedonia, Serbia, one of those places, but on the way, I guess, they picked up 7% Italian blood, so I guess uh, it runs, you know, you want to show off the uh, biceps, you know, you want to go on, you want to show off, so those type of things, but... But I, I used to be much bigger until the uh, pandemic. Yeah, things are kind of looking up these days. Uh, in terms of the pandemic, things are getting better. I should get my shot. Um, but I'm too lazy. I, I'll probably be the last person to die of it. The poor king of all media. No more podcast, he died. And then people will really appreciate me. You know? oh, I had such a great podcast. Wow, so sad. Could have just gotten a couple of shots. Okay, so, so basically today's topic, and then I will go over. I hope I put it on my board. Yes, today's topic will be uh, Michael Jackson. Is it ethical to listen to Michael Jackson? Um, now the first thing is, was Michael Jackson guilty of the uh, crimes that he was um, that he was supposed to have committed? Now. The thing is, um, let's first go through that now. What is the for for Michael Jackson? Well, people were after his money. You know, people wanted to get at his money, right? I mean, let's face it, you know? But he didn't have any money. <laughs> he spent it all, he wasted all his money, he went through it like a drunken sailor. So he really didn't have any money, let's face it. Um, another thing was when the uh, latest kid, they uh, they did a search warrant and they went in and they, the cops came in full barrel the sheriff's office into his Santa Barbara camp. It was a uh, nether Netherland, well, never Neverland or whatever the hell that was. They didn't find anything. Okay, so those are pretty much two defenses, you know. And you always got to give the person the. Um, He's innocent until proven guilty. So he never was really proven guilty. But the thing to that is, well, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of his security staff was connected with the LAP, the uh, LA Sheriff's Office, the Lasso. And um, he's probably, they were probably tipped off. Now, the guilt ledger is very heavy. Now, why would you pay $25 million in a civil lawsuit to settle if you weren't guilty? I mean, it's a lot of money. I don't care. If he was worth at the time a half a billion dollars, right? You know, I, I, mean, I mean, why would you pay that much? Why would you pay? I mean, why would you pay anything? Maybe you would pay maybe a million dollars just to get the, the kid off your back, right? And the later came out that the kid had basically the goods on him. He 
basically to describe his penis. There's certain markings on Michael Jackson's penis, around his penis, that the kid knew about. So, to me, that was basically, I mean, a lot of things went back and forth in my mind. Was Michael Jackson guilty? Not guilty. But that was the thing that kind of sold me on, that he was guilty. And of course, there was other kids that came forward, the kids in the uh, Neverland, uh, leaving Neverland special. I mean, as the last kid, he was shown in the, uh, what was the, uh, Mar uh, the, was the Indian guy that did the interview, I forget his name. But he was, you know, that special, and, and he eventually <laughs> tried to uh, come out, and, and Jackson went on trial, but when he was acquitted. So, um, to me, the, the guilt is pretty apparent. Um, I, I think it's, you know, I think you have to be deluding yourself to say he's not guilty. I mean, is I mean, of course, we'll never know for sure. Okay, um, I, you know, I I think that's one thing you can always say. See, I could be wrong. Okay, but you know, like to me, there's just so. Much, I mean, oh, another thing in his favor, uh, Macaulay Culkin, who was a. Uh, was, uh, you know, used to hang him around with Michael Jackson when he was young, said he never did anything that to me. So you know, that's a pretty strong statement from a pretty reputable, you know, guy. Maybe he's trying to, you know, he's trying to protect him, but he did say in his favor. So there were, have been people, young uh, men, who have come out and they grow up and try to protect him. So there have been things, but it's too many cases of, you know, and, you figure if you give $25 million to a kid in 1993, you wouldn't be, you know, you, you couldn't have that bad judgment, you know, it's just, it's, you know, um, there's a lot of people that feel very strongly about pedophilia. Um, I have a friend, the Italian guy, who says they should be killed. <laughs> Any pedophile should be killed. I mean, now pedophilia is a, a phenomenon that hurt. It, it happens exclusively in men. Now, I'm a more a scientific bent person. I believe more in science. I want to find out what causes this phenomenon. I don't believe you should just kill a person. I just want. I want to find out more about it. I've, I've, I've learned more about it. And pedophilia is more of a brain disorder. So it's basically when a man, you know, a man's brain when he grows up is wired. Pick a female, and some heterosexual, homosexuals, of course, another male. But for some reason, there's a switch to a young male or a young female child. This is a horrible thing. It's one of the worst things that can happen to you. And this is something you cannot change, okay? Now, so I don't say they should be killed. <laughs> it's a horrible thing, you know. I, I mean, what do you do? It's, you know, I mean. But, um, so this, this is a really one of the most repugnant things that have happened in person. And scientifically, it's not their fault. You know, they can maybe control acting upon this repugnant thing, but, um, you know, but um, it's a really horrible thing to happen to someone. I mean, it's almost like we have to give them their sympathy. Now, the question is, is since I do believe he did do these, these horrible things, should we listen to his music or should I, as I did today, uh, by the way, the Michael Jackson um, cassette I got, I got it a lot, and I was almost happy I got it, because I you know I'm not a guy who normally listens to Michael Jackson, to tell you the truth, I'm more of a classic rock guy, I listen to like the Association, the CCR, or Buffalo Springfield, and those type of things. So, you know, I'm that guy who would be caught dead really than Michael Jackson, but I'm glad I got it, you know, I wanted to hear some Michael Jackson, and you know, I, I thought the songs were rather good, especially the first song, Want to Be Starting Something, I was very impressed with the <clears throat> base and um, one thing or another thing is impressive it, you know he has this ability to you know you know as, as things evolve in music it's hard to come out with original melodies you know because they're all taken so he's able to ability to start with something a layer of melody upon melody uh, and that's a very difficult thing so he's a very he was a very talented individual there's no doubt about it. again not my cup of tea normally more into Hendrix I'm more into uh, you know, stealing Dan, Grand Funk, and those type of groups, but um, yeah, he was definitely a very talented individual, able to, you know, start with a one, uh, like a minor melody, but put another melody on top of it, just very impressive, very impressive, but, um, so that's the ethical question, can we, in, in good, 
you know, listen to this. And is this, you know, knowing most likely, again, not, can't be 100% sure. And I think each of us has to say that, you know. Um, and, I, and when I first got the cassette, I wasn't thinking of that, but I thought of that kind of today. Was that something, you know, if I knew when I got the cassette and I said, okay, I'm going to have these cassettes matching up against each other, would I put that out? I didn't think it would win, you know. <laughs> and then I said, wait, if this wins, i got to play Michael Jackson. He's not a good human being, you know. But it really wasn't his fault then, you know. Science is not his fault. You know, the only thing that he could have done is not act upon it, you know? And it's a really difficult thing. It's like saying to me, hey, you know, there's a beautiful girl, you, and she likes you, but you can't have sex with her. <laughs> you know, she, doesn't, she likes you. She wants to go and have sex with you, too. It's consensual, too. You know, you, you can have sex. But you can't have sex with her because it's not allowed. <laughs> so, you know, these are difficult things in life, you know, and maybe it'll be a treatment for these uh, pedophiles. Pedophile males, um, it's very sad. It's, but uh, I'm not, I don't believe in killing the military <laughs> friends. Yeah, he, he's more, he doesn't understand. This is something that's a brain disorder. It's a, a brain disorder. Okay, let's go to part two. Let's talk about our top views as of today, which is 3 12 2001, March 12 2001. And, um, You'll notice a heavy beetle presence. <laughs> Four out of the top five are beetles, and um, I could probably boost my, my viewership, which is now at 302 uh, followers, uh, by um, maybe I'll become woke, you know? <laughs> Let's get Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Say some women, LGBTQ, that I asterisk every time. <laughs> yeah, they don't do that. But uh, you know, you notice uh, the beetles are heavy. Uh, number one is something, right? Uh, Vinyl and it's holding steady, still is good. But look at this coming up, say 147 views on vinyl, but coming up fast is flying. And we could be hearing some more Beatles music, but not this weekend, maybe next weekend. So we're gonna be hearing some interesting stuff this weekend. Uh, there's a group from San Francisco tomorrow, very popular group. And on Monday, uh, one of the great albums of all time by a guy who used to be in Cream. So, you know, some interesting things, so stay tuned. Uh, number two is 137 is flying off the magical mystery. Wow, never thought this would be so popular. 10 behind in views at 137. Now, number three is I should have known better off the Hey Jude album, by the way, which was never released in uh, Great Britain because they had all the songs on there. <laughs> they butchered them up. I mean, the Butcher Block albums. They butchered them up, but it was on Hey Jude. Uh, American in North, North America, I think it's a North American release, so also in Canada. Uh, we don't bother Mexico, I guess. I don't know if they're in North America, technically. 97 views came out of nowhere. I don't know why everyone went so crazy. And it's a great song, though. I should have known better. John Lennon's song. 97 view, all three of them on vinyl. Okay. Actually, all five of the uh, songs are on vinyl. And uh, number, so number three, so it's this something flying in hate. Uh, and uh, I should have known that it's such a long song title. I had to push the Beatles in. Uh, number four, coming in number four, only one behind was something else, maybe related to something, also written by George Harrison, but on 96 views, okay, 96 views, something else. Okay, uh, I think it's off his Devil's Radio album. Uh, el album uh, Jeff Lynn was going crazy in the late 80s producing albums like Tom Petty and um, Chapman Lillisberry was doing very well. And um, that was also on vinyl. And the fourth out of the five Beatles tracks is The Ballad of John and Yoko, uh, which was a single which will also be found on Hey Jude, but I originally released it on the Hey Jude, uh, the Past Masters vinyl, uh, and that is 89. Now, two track. By the way, after these two tracks, there there's not much. You know, I think the next is sixty-five, American Woman. So there's a big gap. These so these two guys take a listen because you know, we want we want to get those big bad Beatles out. There's too many of them. Uh, at number six is the Walk of Life with eighty-six views. So again, I told you very easy. You type in the search box Walk of Life. 
and you put at hip days lounge at sign hip days lounge now pop up and you just click on it and it got stuff to do and we're gonna knock these beetles out <laughs> that's what we want to but they're so damn good <laughs> i always said that the beetles are just in a class by themselves and these idiots are all rush rush better than beetles <laughs> there's some morons look at this. look at this. i prove it to you i mean <laughs> I don't see no Rush song. <laughs> you know, let's buy a Rush. I, I think I'm going to get a Rush album because I just want to see what kind of views we get, you know? I won't get a Metallica album. They suck too much. <laughs> okay. Although I did find my Metallica shirt, so I'm going to be premiering that sometime soon. You know, I definitely will uh, get a Rush album. Uh, maybe Farewell to Kings or something, you know, on CD. Yeah, I get, I try to get it on CD. I have, or cassette, because I have a... I, Cause that's probably my weakest in terms of amount. I have a lot. I have a lot of vinyls. So I, don't, I don't know if I want the vinyls. Are a pain in the ass. <laughs> I love cassettes, by the way. And I, everyone puts them down. I think they're great. They sound good. They're, you know, and, you know, they don't rip. They sometimes they rip, but you, you know, after a while. But okay, the two. So Walk of Life's at eighty six, and finally, I Come Tumbling by Grand Funk Railroad, eighty five vinyl. So they're wanting to get up and after that I think number eight is 65 guess who which one is on compact disc American woman okay all right and the final segment deals with new finds okay let's see what we got okay so the first thing Got a DVD. It's not a Blu-ray because they they never released it in uh, Blu-ray, and it's called "The Day the Music Died." The day the music died. It's about the uh, festival, the New York Pop Festival, uh, which was July seventeenth, eighteenth, and nineteenth, nineteen seventy, um, at Randall's Island in New York, and um, it's, it's out of a company in Tokyo. Now this was a very Suppose I don't know what's good this is gonna be, and I have a thing that I will not watch this to uh, July 17th, 18th, and 19th, or the weekend around that. You know, so I'm not gonna be able to see this and tell you what it's like. So, and I, and actually, this will be on the site of that weekend. Um, so um, I, you know, so we will not see this. But let me tell you who's on this. We first, the group's on this, featuring live performances by Grand Funk Railroad. Okay, Rhinoceros. Okay. Mm -hmm. I heard of them, but I never heard of them. Much music. John P. Sebastian, of course. Steppenwolf, great group. Jethro Tull, great group. Grandpa Grove's great group, too. Uh, who's that? Jethro Tull, the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Wow. Delaney and Bonnie and Friends, okay. Richie Havens, great group. Mountain, of course, Mountain, love Mountain. Ten years after, Alvin Lee, I'm going home. By other cop, I don't know what the hell he said. Yeah, I remember at Woodstock he goes, "I'm gonna do. I'm going home by Eric Clapton." I thought he said by Eric Clapton. I don't know what the hell he said. <laughs> Tony Williams Lifetime. John McLaughlin, and Larry Young with Eric Clapton, Jack Bruce, and Miles Davis. And special guard time guest star New York rock and roll ensemble. It looks pretty good. Joe Cocker with Mad Dogs and Englishmen, Dr. John, The Night Tripper, Robbie Shanker, Elephant's Memory, Voices of East Harlem, and Van Morrison. Sounds pretty good, I mean, but something went wrong here. That's the thing, so I want to kind of be surprised. So, but we're going to see highlights of this. Uh, um, and again, Friday, so you'll see seven minutes. Saturday, you'll see seven minutes. Three, two minutes. Maybe I'll expand it a little. Maybe I'll go, um, you know, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll, let's see, about 10 minutes, you know, maybe I'll do a few more clips, you know. Uh, but I'm going to do this for each of the festivals. So this will be the first of the uh, two minute and 20 minute clips. All right, let's see what's next now. Again, I stated my policy that I don't like to do um, greatest hits, and I probably shouldn't have done this, but I saw this, and how much was this? Four bucks, and I said, I gotta get this. I used to have this, but they took all my possession. David Bowie changed one. I said, I gotta get this. I used to have this. 
probably should get some, I mean, he's probably a guy I probably should get all his albums. He's one of the great performers of, of all time. And, um, but he has a lot of albums. So I said, eh, let me get, because I know, you know, this album pretty good. Uh, Space Oddity, of course, is one of my favorite songs of all time. Top, top, I mean, top 25 song of all time, easily. John Molly Dancing, meh, Changes, the great song. Ziggy Stardust, um, Inspired Us from Mars. One of two songs I love by Bowie that I left out of this is uh, Star Man and um, The Man Who Sold the World. To me, that's a, two of my favorite songs by him. Suffragette so City, The Genie Genie, a couple of good songs. Diamond Dogs, Red Bull, Red Bull, Young Americans, Fame, Golden Years. <laughs> Not the best years, but I don't know why he loved those years. <laughs> so, and he never got really into the Golden Years too much, Bowie. He kind of got a little bit of cancer and um, passed on. So, but changes one on cassette. Do we got a Dolby on this? I don't know. Let me see. Again, cassettes aren't as bad, and I have seen a lot of people put down cassettes and, uh, you know, because I like Dolby. But I enjoy it. I mean, you know, for, you know, if they're cheap, heck, why not? Okay. Now, I ordered this book before. I really wanted this because I like to talk a lot, a lot about this book, and uh, it never came, of course. <laughs> it disappeared, and I put an inquiry in the U.S. Postal System, and I'll get back to you in, in two days. Of course, I never got back. All right, so I ordered it again because it's cheap. And the name of the book is The Selfish Gene. Now, how do I describe this book? And The Selfish Gene, of course, is by every Christian's <laughs> most hated man of all Christendom, Richard Dawkins. And this book was originally released in 1976. And this is the 30th anniversary edition, and I, and I do believe that um, this one came out with in 19, 2006, and this one's actually printed in 2009. But this, well, basically, he did some updates in uh, 2006. So this basically, he had some information in 2006. And um, so, I'd say about this book is many people take their guidance from the Bible. So they read the Bible. And they, they have it in, in the, you go to a hotel, you open this Gideon's Bible, right? It's the Rocky Raccoon, they have Gideon's Bible, right? But this book should be replaced and it replaced. This this is actually the truth. Okay. This is, what are we what are we and everything on earth? You know, what what is life? You know, I think George Harrison has it. What is life? You know, what is it all about? And this book contains the answers. And these things basically in a nutshell, but you should read the book because it's a fascinating uh, answer. Basically these things called genes, right? And these genes need to replicate, but they got a problem. They can't do it themselves. So they create these 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 vesicles. And these vesicles can be all, all different types of things, like human beings and they can be cockroaches and they can be whales and be dandelions and they can be they can be uh, tuna fish. <laughs> That's what we are, in a nutshell. Ways the genes can make more genes. And um, that's what we are. It's a scary thought if you think about it. It's all, all our genes, all our hopes, all our, you know, we look at our children or whatever, you know, we look at a beautiful sunset and we think, oh, God created that. No, it's just the brain you know, making us, you know, think these crazy thoughts. But I, I do, you know, I think Dawkins does say that. No, the, human, the humans are in a cognitive state where we've kind of surpassed just being more than a genes creation that we can sort of change the world and we can create other uh, things that um, will, um, you know, enhance our life, you know, that, you know, could even create computers and robots and things of that nature. So we've kind of taken ourselves out of this automation. So... Um, that's what he kind of talks about um, in this book. That even though we are in this endless cycle, that humans are immortal, but the gene can be immortal, that we, as a species, can, can also 
not the immortal, but can be out of this cycle of just being the control of the gene. You know, we don't have to just have sex to reproduce. Like for me, example, I'm an incel. This cute Colombian girl at the supermarket, I need to talk about it. Okay. I have probably put a troca twice now and <laughs> hopefully can make this somehow that day, not you, vice. <laughs> wow, she pretty. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> right now. many keto diets you shouldn't eat any kind of meat. However, they're coming out with breads that have no net carbs. Now what is a net carb? It means you take your total carbs, like for instance in this bread, and they have, uh, the, 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 my, cl my cleaner, she uh, came over and showed me bread, but it, it, it had no net carbs. But it, it didn't look too good. This one looks a lot better. I just bought roast beef and I had that right after. <laughs> and this one is called Keto White. Keto White, okay? Now, what do you mean by net carbs? You take the total carbs in this bread, which is 12, okay? And that would be good on paper. But then you subtract fiber, which is 12. <laughs> And any sugar alcohols, which there are none. But the fibers are 12, so 12 minus 12 is zero. There are zero net carbs. I mean, basically the carbs are not affecting you. The, uh, and by the way, they break it down further. There's soluble fiber. That's fiber that kind of bounds to the, um, bounds to the food, right? Which is good fiber. It actually helps your cholesterol too. Insoluble fiber just passes right through. And... Um, that's actually good. Um, some foods also, you know, sometimes we eat a, a chocolate thing by Atkins and they have uh, sugar alcohols and they can actually feed too many of them. So you got to, you know, just have, I have one left, I have, uh, and they have some sugar alcohol. So you don't want to eat too many of those because they're, they're kind of like a laxative, they have a laxative effect. So you just have one and I, I won't say one at this uh, job of mine and have a problem. <laughs> so, um, Problem. So, so I'm gonna have a nice little uh, meal right now. I'm gonna have just bought some roast beef. I bought some onions and I brought some uh, mayo. And I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, put the roast beef on and I'm gonna put the mayo on. Now, these of course, I'm gonna put them back in the box. Nice dark place. I'm get moldy. This is for insole. Insole. Let me tape them up too. It's be like you know, she don't want any light. Get in. So it might not be for if you're not, you know, not only an incel and voluntary cell, but like me. Uh, so, um, all right. So you know, it's a podcast number twenty-three will be going up very shortly. And again, tomorrow I usually do a podcast, but I have something I have to take care of. Um, but I will do podcast number twenty-four on Sunday. Sunday I usually do not do a podcast, so but I will. So. Again, uh, what do you think? You know, uh, you know, in the comment section, do you think? First of all, is was Michael Jackson? Do you think he's guilty? And if he was guilty, I mean, if he wasn't guilty, then obviously playing his music is okay. But if he wasn't guilty, if he was, you think he was guilty? Do you think we should play his music? On uh, you know, you should tweet tweet out his music. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Something uh, an ethical I think that uh, just came over me. Okay, well, thank you very much. And again, today is March 12, 2021. The King of All Mediums. Take care. Have a good evening.